thought it'd be a really good idea with the tremendous response we've had from our virtual proving ground videos, whether it's on social media or on the website, there's lots of questions coming in. And I'm really excited and thankful for as many views as we've had. But I thought we're not doing a really great job of getting to the questions that you've had, either on the new products or just in general agronomy side. So I thought, why don't we just do a few questions and give you some answers on what's out there. And so I'll just go ahead and give you the question and give you the answer how I feel today is what we should answer it like. So number one is, what are your thoughts with the ISNT soil test with a two and a half acre grid? So when they say ISNT, it stands for the Illinois State Nitrogen Test. What we're really checking is organic in. So in other words, if you've had years and years of animal manure, that would be more of an organic in instead of a commercial fertilizer applied. And I'm not a big fan of grids from the simple fact we know with soil types just never quite just go in a perfect grid system. So if you were going to come in and you're doing two and a half acre grids beside each other, all of a sudden you can see we're going to have a question mark here because we have three different soil types that would be in those grids. And it starts to confuse it. So a lot of my soils, you know, on the ISNT would be in that the low ones where we didn't, you know, we purchased ground maybe that didn't have a lot of livestock history. It would be in a 235 for an organic and ISNT score. Not great. So 500 is when you start to really get excited when you're in that 500. Those are kind of, you tell me you're in that 400 to 500 range. You and I know that if we were just using a bandit on a planter, putting, let's say, 60 to 80 units on bandit, that's going to take us a long way to some really key crops. So not a fan of grids, whether that's soil testing or even ISNT. I don't see why we do that. We would come in and we would stay, pull the cores for sure in that unique soil type itself. And then you'd be labeled them A, B, and C, and you'd be following through that way. So that's things I would look at. Next question, how much nitrogen carryover did you have on ground? You only applied 30 pounds of N. Also, what is some of your organic matters? So our organic matters range from two and a half on our light timber soils to four, to probably about 4.2% 4, 4 organic matters, about as high as we'd get in central Illinois. So where we had the 30 pounds of nitrogen applied, it was flat, that gas tank was on E. It was flat out. There was nothing left. So those are things that you know, you and I would take a look at. Let's grab another question here and see uh, exactly where, where we're at. What question is, what do you think about Stein's Twin 20 corn? Well, there, there's no secret. We worked with Harry Stein and Myron and that team. They got some pretty unique genetics. I really think it's the corn of tomorrow. I love the fact that it's shorter. I like the fact that the top half to three quarters of that plant is vertical leaf. And then it goes to the horizontal floppy leaf on the bottom. I really think that's where we're going to be in the future. Far as row spacing, we've done a lot of checks. We've done twin 20, we've done 20 inch, we've done 30 inch. The 20 inch keeps walking away with usually the top by a bushel or two over the twin 20s. And when it's that close, it becomes a no brainer for me. I love the fact that we can get the undercover for fungicide and the wide drop in there for later season in. So the 20 inch, I like better than the Twin 20. We still obviously have the Twin 20 planter. I love it on soybeans and on the Stein beans has been tremendous. But on the corn, I'm probably moving a little more staying in the 20 inch camp because of some of the challenges of getting a row crop equipment in those Twin 20s and down that. The night we were doing the opening, I'm sorry, the day we were doing the opening, the question was how many miles of roots did you actually say a corn plant has? was 3,000 actively grown at any one time per plant. So you think of that, you realize how much potential that plant has. And that's why we're in tillage. And that's why we talk about fertilization and how do we get it right? Because that corn plant has a tremendous ability. When it's pulling up water, it's pulling in nutrients. And so those are things that, uh, that we work on. What about your thoughts on putting tracks on planters? Well, I'm a big fan. Uh, that center of that planter drag, that yield drag in the center of those large planters is a real issue. I see it again this year. Uh, we've had about two and a half to three days of harvest already. It shows up instantly on our, on our yield sense monitor. And so when we're doing plots, we take the center out and then we take each side of the wing planter out 
And you can see that pretty common still today yet to have 10 to 12 bushels. That's on a track planter. Not uncommon to see more than that on a wheel planter. So I'm a pretty big fan of tracks that are on there. Uh, question here is, how many pounds of N per your bushel goal? Well, remember, the universities that have done a lot of work say, and it's, it's a fact, it takes 1.1 pounds of nitrogen to raise a bushel of corn. But you realize, you know, that's the grow of this plant and the root system underground. And of course, we got to put this ear on and we got to pollinate it here with the tassel on top. So that's what's needed to grow it. The challenge for you and I is, how do we get that a lower so we can be profitable? You know, what is corn today? 310 here, the day we're shooting this. And so we're in a 310 corn market. The challenge is, I want to be 0.7. So that's the club you and I want to be in. The lowest I have been personally on our farm is 0.58. And that'll get your motor running pretty high. But this is the goal. Realize, and there's a lot of growers out there that are one pound of nitrogen to get one bushel of corn. By no means am I saying you're failing. I'm saying this is where you and I need to go. If you and I are going to keep our families in profit and we're going to continue to farm, we're going to need to figure out how to get in the 0.7 club versus a 1.1 to 1.2 club. And those are things that are out there. Uh, next question is, what's wrong with using the root systems from previous crops if you don't have compaction issues? And I like the way you're thinking. So in other words, you're saying, if we're gonna have in the surface last year's root system, remember we just talked about 3,000 miles. So we have, I call them fossil tracks. These are old root channels. And then you and I come in, let's say we're just no-tilling corn on corn. And we put this new seed in here, and that seedling root, and those others, as they start to come off the crown, they're going to take, no different you and I, we all like to walk downhill, not up, they're going to take the least path of resistance. And they can find their way down those old root channels. The problem is the pathological effect, and we call it that negative yield drag on second year corn on corn. This is going to create diseases, and it's going to create a problem for this plant. And so that's why we come in, and with our bullet, we come in, and what are we, 12 inches deep? And we just destroy all the root channels. So the new root has to pick his own path down, and now he's going down a new virgin ground. And we're going to keep himself in a lot happier state. Remember, corn can never have a bad day. A question about, what are your thoughts on having super flotation tires on a planting tractor? Uh, not a big fan. Corn, soybeans, I think it would work. Corn just doesn't like wheel tracks. And when we were testing that years ago, worked with Caterpillar on testing a track where we cut the center lugs out right where the disc opener was going. In other words, we took a hot knife from a tractor pulling type concept where they cut these tractor pulling tires and we cut out seven inches right in the center of where the other wheels are in that track system. And now we had a virgin spot without the lug marks. So I'm not a huge fan of those lug marks we talk about raising corn. When we were doing the test in 15 inch corn, 20 inch corn, 30 inch corn, the 15 inch corn was always behind because the fact where we were planting in a wheel track and then that Kinsey planter was running over the top of that row and it always was behind. So those are things I would be concerned about. And uh, if you can, I really like the fact of staying in the row. That's why the narrow track tractors are pretty hard to beat. Would you use additional liquid fertilizer with hog manure. In other words, you're a hog producer and you got some really high fertility rates. Well, you know, we'll talk about this size several times in this session. We know that P or phosphates are not readily available at 65 and under. So if we're planting in some cool 50 degree soils, that plant's gonna be starving, even though we have a high P1 rate. Let's say your P1s are through the roof, I don't know, pick imaginary number of a P1 of 80 to 100. And you say, well, Greg, I'm loaded up with phosphates. But that plant that, that is attached to the negative and positive charges of that soil, that plant's going to struggle. That's why we like banding a little bit of starter right beside that so we get those first crown roots and the seedling roots right into that, and that really helps. So I think there is an advantage, a slight amount of starter, even on some really high P1s. And in that case, I probably wouldn't be going with a 1034.0. I'd probably use something more like a 7.22.5. Definitely have the zinc in there, though, when you're doing those things. Question is, are, am I doing any cover crops to help with the carbon-nitrogen ratio? 
But we're pretty heavy in the cover crops from the standpoint we have vegetables. We raise a lot of pumpkins. Um, also, in our seed corn production. So we have a lot of seed corn acres been harvested here, you know, right early in September. So the day after uh, Labor Day, a lot of acres were coming out. We'll come in and we'll put cover crops in those situations. Silage ground for the dairy. And any time where we have vegetables like the pumpkin crops and that, we're putting cover crops out. I'm not a huge fan of the rise from the standpoint I've gotten burned already in the spring. Hard to get those guys knocked down if we're in a wet, cool spring. I've seen some yield reduction. So we're using more of, of the sweet oats and radishes and those types. But realize it's a regional thing. You have to use what you like best for where you're at. So those are things that, you know, you need to work with. Step into it slow. Realize there can be a cost to cover crops if you and I are not managing it. The game plan has got to be well laid out. And I think there is no question going to be a soil t health issue. It's going to be a benefit, but there also can be yield drags. And so it's something really to think about and think through. So we have a question on how about 400 bushel corn? You're going to get 400 bushel corn this year. Well, you know, in our drip fields, we're really pushing the envelope. Uh, some of those fields are already out, more yet to go. I don't know if we're going to hit 400. The top so far is 316. I like what I see, though. It was over 300 the whole way through the whole pass. And that's what gets my motor running. When we start to see the jump up, I'm talking in a field where we want to have drip in there. It's going to make 200 at best, probably in that 185 to 200. Soil types are pretty marginal. Got some sandy river bottoms in there. And so it's pretty exciting to see that. So this is going to be the conclusion of the general's questions. Um, Please keep those questions coming. As you watch the videos on the YouTube and on Facebook, keep them coming in and we're excited to go ahead and, and answer those and keep an eye out. We'll go ahead probably at a later date, we'll answer some more. I really value your input.